Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, with this bag, we're about to embark on an adventure. And I did just receive this hat over the weekend, so I will be wearing it today for this video. Today's adventure, besides looking like a badass with my cape, is to shoot four sheets of Kodak high speed infrared film, which I've never done before, and we're gonna learn together. Okay, so technically, before when I said I'd never shot this film before, that was only a half truth. I did two days ago take one sheet in my backyard and I did some exposure testing. Um, I basically just loaded that one sheet and took an exposure and then removed my dark slide a little bit further in increments so that um, the sheet was exposed different times. Here's the results um, from those tests and I think I've concluded that I'm going to be shooting this around ISO 6. It is fairly expired. But at the same time, I have no idea what I'm doing with infrared film. So we're, we're learning together. We're gonna be shooting this around ISO 6. But the first thing we need to do is find something worth being photographed in infrared. And there's bugs everywhere. So first things first, gotta spray ourselves down. But my, my goal and objective for all four photos today is to keep things simple. I want to change one thing in each photo so that when I develop them, I will be able to learn something new with each photo. Now with film, the key is to, to only change one thing and keep everything else the same so you know how that one thing affected the process, whether that's developing it for a different amount of time, um, reciprocity, you know, whatever. And infrared, there's just so much on top of everything that I really need to consolidate all that information and learn specific things. So that's the goal for today. So I literally was joking earlier about wearing the cape, but I just walked about four feet in that direction and there are swarms of bugs anytime you go any anywhere near anything green. So I've put the I've put the coat back on. We're gonna try and just run through this thing and get out of this bug area. So I think the the first shot of the day is going to be that sunflower over there. I'm I'm gonna talk to you over here before I go over there because there's tons of bugs over there. I think that is going to be this first shot. I think it could look cool. Um, I don't quite know the composition yet, but I, I would like to. Um, get some of the sky, the mountain, the water, and the sunflower in the shot. Um, water ends up looking pretty cool in infrared film, so, so that's the plan there. So one thing to know about infrared light, just in general, is that it is beyond the spectrum that our eyes can see. It's beyond the visible spectrum. So a way to really enhance this effect is to, to use filters, and I have a Lee 87 filter which basically is just like hardcore sunglasses. It's almost an ND filter in the sense that it is going to cut out all of the visible spectrum and just allow the film to capture the infrared spectrum. Now, I only have one pack of this film, 25 shots, 24 now that I did my test shot. And so I wasn't gonna go purchase a really expensive and heavy duty filter just for 25 shots. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to grasp and get good at this infrared stuff. So I ended up just getting um, this polyester technical filter from Lee Filters. It's an 87 filter and the Kodak data sheet helps you understand how to use that. Um, but I didn't get a, a holder or anything for my lens, so I'm just going to be physically holding it up to the lens and hoping that these 
shots turn out. So let's pop over there and let's give this first one a shot. So one thing I'm for sure gonna keep in mind with all of these shots is focus. Plane of focus is a little bit different with infrared light versus the visible spectrum. Now, if you read the data sheet, there's a lot of big technical words um, and they don't quite make sense to me. So there's math involved, but for this one, I'm just going to focus on what I can visibly see and stop down as low as I can close down the aperture to as low as I can without hopefully encountering reciprocity. I've got things relatively set. Um, I'm gonna be shooting this at ISO 6, F32 at one second. Um, there is a bit of wind, so I'm actually a little bit nervous that that yeah, that's definitely gonna affect. I'm, I may have to change it, but I'm ready to go. I just wanted to show you. This is what the filter looks like, very opaque. What I'm gonna do is just hold it over the lens like this and wait for, wait for the wind to die down a little bit. It just picked up, so. If it dies down, we'll take the one second exposure. If it doesn't die down, we'll make some, we'll make some changes. I found my next shot, it's over there, kind of mirroring the path that I walked through. So that being said, it is infested with bugs. I've managed to get my shot set. And the thing I'm gonna change with this one is the focus. I focused on infinity and then I went a quarter of a spin further. Uh, so a quarter of a spin extension of the lens past infinity. That's just a rough estimate, but according to the math, I think that's at least in the right direction. So it's already set up. I'm gonna grab my film. I'll set this camera up so you can see me get killed by bugs. Honestly, the worst part about the bugs is really hearing them. They're so loud and they just swarm and it's a quite haunting sound. But that last shot was F45 at one second. Like I said, I focused a little bit past infinity. All right, I've got to admit, I'm kind of doing a cop out on this composition. It's not the best in the world. I wanted one with one of these tires. There's a bunch of tires on the beach. Um, but I'm just not feeling very creative. This is more of a technical thing. I just, I'm focusing on the tire and I just wanna see what ends up being in focus on this one. Um, I haven't metered yet, but I think it's gonna be similar to that last one around F45 at one second. Okay. I'm so tired. This has turned into a lot bigger, scarier of a video than I initially planned. I did shoot that last one at one second, F45, and right as I hit the shutter, the swarm attacked, and I just booked it out of there. And you know what, I'm checking right now. It is right now 102 degrees out here. I've got one sheet of film left. Like I said on that last one, I kind of just took the easy way out. I'm not going for many artistic things right now. I just need to get a feel for this film and I'm ready to be done. So I'm gonna start heading back to the car. If I see something, I'll capture it. If not, I think I, think I might need to call it for today. I 
did find this one, it seems like the killer bugs have calmed down a little bit. The problem with them is they're like suicide bugs. So it's 100 degrees out here and you're running, makes you breathe heavy, and literally they just dive into your mouth and up your nose. So you have to hold your breath when you're running and that's just not good. Anyways, back to photography. You guys don't care about bugs. Photography. I think this is an interesting composition right here. Um, it's gonna be my first landscape orientation of the day. I've focused on the middle ground. It's gonna be interesting because it's very contrasty. So I, I, I wanna see, I mean, that's contrasty to the visible eye. Is it gonna be more contrasty to infrared light or is the infrared light gonna bounce around a lot more and fill in some of those shadows? I don't know, we're about to find out. I'm gonna meter for the highlights and the shadows on this one and then I will choose my exposure in between. And then I'm gonna look at the data sheet and see which one thing we're gonna change this time. So I decided the variable for this one is just gonna be the contrast and see how it handles lights and darks. I almost got attacked by an owl, that was super cool. But the highlight reading is F22 at a fourth of a second and the shadow is F22 at four seconds. So I'm gonna go F22 at one second and call it a day and see, see what this looks like. So the next time I see you, I will be in the comfort of my home looking at these final photos. Well guys, I think it's about time to wrap up this video. We are away from all the bugs now, um, back at home. I've got the pictures developed and scanned. I followed the instructions on the data sheet um, for developing. I think it was around nine minutes and 30 seconds in D76 at stock solution uh, for the development. And then after the developing, I didn't use gloves and some of these pictures have fingerprints on them, unfortunately. So there's that, but overall, I don't hate it. I think we got two out of four. I think two of them turned out good, but all of them provided a lesson that we can take away from. So let's jump into it. Let's look at this first one, which is the sunflower picture. I focused on the sunflower. I had it set up. It got a little bit windy. I should have changed my shutter speed. I shot it at one second and that is why it is a little bit blurry, but overall I love how the clouds turned out in this picture. I hate how the fingerprints turned out and focus wise, focusing on the flower, I think turned out all right. This next one, however, is the roughest one and I couldn't figure out what had happened because I thought my metering was correct and my metering could have been off. But what I think happened was as I was taking the exposure and holding the filter over the lens, I think I may have um, pulled it away from the lens a little bit, allowing the light to reflect weird and end up throwing off the exposure for this photo. Though it turned out okay, um, there obviously are some exposure issues. But I think honestly, we're besides this huge ass fingerprint on here, we're heading into the best shots of the day. We got those two warmups out of the way. I think these last two are great. This one was focused on that tire and the tire is in focus. I, I think pretty much everything ended up in focus on this. I love how the brush and the weeds turned super white. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Um, the tire's cool. Like I said earlier in the video, I had pretty much given up on artistry at this point and I was just taking the exposure to take the exposure. And for that reason, I'm happy with how it turned out. I, I do not dislike this photo. But this one, this photo, I I was so burnt out by the end of this. I was sick of the bugs. I was tired, I was hot, and then made this photo. And I am so extremely happy 
with this photo. And I think if I hadn't have gotten this one, I, I would have started having a negative outlook towards infrared photography. I, I wouldn't have been as thrilled and stoked to keep trying as I am right now, having seen this photo. I love the composition. I love the infrared aspect of it. I just really love how this came together. I focused right on that branch that cuts through the middle of the frame on the right hand side. And again, I, I think the focus turned out fine. I, let, you know what, let me read you what the data sheet says about focusing infrared film. Okay, focusing. Lenses do not focus infrared radiation in the same plane as visible radiation because infrared radiation is longer in wavelength than visible radiation the focus point is further from the camera camera lens therefore the lens must be moved slightly further from the film to focus an infrared image this focus difference is most critical when using filters to block all visible radiation to the film okay so here's the part that confused me the most Try extending the lens by 0.25% of its focal length beyond the correct focus for visible light. For example, a 200 millimeter lens would require a 0.5 millimeter extension as 200 millimeters times 0 0.0025 equals 0.5 millimeters. And so far, what I've learned is that that is very minimal. I, I mean, it scientifically is probably true. I'm not a rocket scientist. I don't know for sure. But based on my tests so far, that adjustment, especially shooting at F22 and above, that visible spectrum tends to bleed into each other. Now, I'm not saying, listen to me, don't listen to me. I'm just showing you my results and using this as documentation for myself as I learn. And if you can learn something from it as well, that's fantastic. But that is where I want to end this video for today. I want to thank you guys for going on this long journey. It is a longer video than normal, but thank you for sticking around through the whole thing. I hope you learned something. I definitely did. Until next time, we'll see you later.